There's nothing like experiencing music live and in person. But at this moment, stages are dark as the COVID-19 pandemic threatens the very existence of live music venues. On Destination Live Music Comeback Road, we're going inside some of West Michigan's favorite music spots to discover their rich histories, take a look behind the scenes, hear how the pandemic is affecting them, and how you, the fans, can show your support. Join us on the path to Destination Live Music Comeback Road, West Michigan. Good evening. Hello. Good to see you. Kathy Holbrook, Executive Director of St. Cecilia Music Center. So tell us a little bit about St. Cecilia Music Center's live stream series because you are hosting a lot of artists on this historic stage, but you're doing it virtually. Well, obviously when we could see that we weren't going to be able to do live concerts with an audience uh, in the room, it was, um, it was kind of a no-brainer that we needed to at least bring um, music to the community. That's St. Cecilia's mission. Our mission is to bring music to the community to enrich the lives of the residents. Early on, that was sort of determined. I, you know, with my board of directors, we talked about what are we going to do during this time if we can't have live concerts. And the main thing that we decided was we need to find a way, whatever it is, to continue to fulfill our mission. I kind of just took the bull by the horns and said, we, we're just gonna do a lot of these virtual shows. Uh, we do have a beautiful stage and we need live, you know, music to come off of that in one way or another. So uh, I started calling friends and uh, people that I knew in the area. It became clear that it needed to be, we really needed to focus on local musicians so that they could get here easily and safely. And you know, it came together honestly quite quickly because of course people aren't booked up with gigs and they're dying to play. So tonight we start the series with Ralston Bowles and Michael Crittenton who are two of you know, Grand Rapids' beloved and iconic folk musicians. Um, they're also people who've helped a lot of musicians in this area either get their start or you know, Michael has a recording studio. Sometimes words all to come. I knew that um, it would be great to feature these two performers that, you know, Michigan audiences know and love. In February, we have the King Biscuit Trio coming. This is sort of a honed down version, a little bit of the Thirsty Perch Blues Band. Let's put together, baby. Oh, let's make it a brand new day. Chris Collins heads the Thirsty Perch Blues Band, and so this is. Um, guitar, vocal, harmonica. So it's a little bit more of an acoustic group. You start calling people saying, do you want to play? And I mean, it's it's like I could barely hit send and the texts were like, yes, <laughs> let's find a date. In March, I actually reached out to Rachel Davis's agent. Rachel and Dominic Davis have played her before. Well, the beds and the prayers, we are two, we are two. They will be doing a live stream from their home in Nashville. Uh, Rachel is this fabulous kind of old timey kind of folk singer, jazzy a little bit. She's got a fantastic voice. People know her a lot from some of the festivals uh, in the area. And her um, husband, Dominic John Davis, is a great bass player, plays with Jack White, and very well known. In April, we have Jen Siget from Lansing. And she, again, is this wonderful singer, songwriter, guitarist. And Josh Rose from our area, composer and songwriter. And I thought it'd be great to have the two of them play together. That's sort of the folk blues series that we have on tap. I continued this Michigan Jazz Pianist series. We also have local jazz um, piano and singer Robin Connell. <laughs> And then I'm bringing a young, wonderful um, pianist that is on uh, faculty at Western Michigan. Rufus Ferguson, and he will be here as well. So most of them are, you know, here on the stage. A couple of them aren't. Um, and then we do have some 
And those are all free. We're offering all of these free of charge on our Facebook and YouTube channel. Then we have a couple of live streams that um, I was able to put together with some of the artists that would have been here. So you don't have a live audience. What is the upside? What is the advantage and the really groovy, cool thing about having these virtual performances? I guess it would be the potential reach, right? The potential reach that we would have to an audience that might maybe don't even know about us. You know, you really don't know. They might, it's free. They might stumble upon something or they do like the artist and they don't live in Grand Rapids. And so they can see this show and from the, the, the ones that we're doing from stage, I love that we get to show people Royce Auditorium. With the ones that you've done so far, what's been the audience reaction? What sort of comments have you been getting from fans? Very, very positive comments. Um, people are so grateful to have this opportunity to hear live, you know, whatever form of live music it is, and especially when they get to see it in the hall. I have been, like, I've just been so moved by the support of this community, of the artists, of agents, of managers. You know, that whole saying of what's gone on here is that we all say we're in this together. Well, the music community, we're really in this together. How important St. Cecilia is to the community, it's really cool to see that that is the case. So is there a financial benefit to St. Cecilia and to the artists through these live streams? Only if people want to donate. <laughs> You know, we are offering them for free because again, I, I don't want to offer this up and then have there be a barrier for people right now um, with buying Link and only having, only having a smaller number of people be able to see it. Yes, they can tip the artist. I usually, you know, we'll put up ways that they can, they can do that. Our point is that we want to put music out in the community. So, you know, obviously you feel good about being able to offer this kind of programming, but how do you feel about it in terms of how it ties into supporting the local artist community and, and how artists have reacted to this? When I reached out for this series here, it, you know, it was an overwhelming, you know, an overwhelmingly positive response that people wanted to be part of it. They want to play number one. They want to play at a venue. I mean, they are happy to play at a venue because so many people haven't played at a venue forever. So even if they have done some of their own live streaming, it maybe has been from home, you know? Um, so they really, they have like a gig, you know, an actual gig on the books. It's important to us. We have, we have sponsors that did step up for the season, even knowing that we wouldn't have live concerts probably. So then this allows us to support these artists. And it keeps them connected to their fans, uh, which is really important during this time period. I mean, not, it's not a lot, but we're paying them. And so that's important to us as well. I mean, to help that community in this, you know, situation. So all in all, I mean, again, I think that we are, you know, we want to get back to live music, but this, this is as good as it gets right now. I mean, this is what we can do. And, uh, and we're fulfilling our mission. We're supporting the artist community. And, and we're bringing music to everyone. And that's what we, that's why we exist. Well, we want to thank you for helping keep music alive, live music alive here in the Grand Rapids area. Thank you, Kathy Holbrook, for, uh, for being part of this, and, uh, and uh, good luck as we move forward in 2021. Thanks for all you're doing for the music scene and covering everything so diligently. Thank you. Thank you.